Good evening. Welcome to December 11th, 2017 Valley View School Board meeting. Sorry about the technical difficulties, but the guys back there in the booth, I'm sure, are feverishly working to fix it. So if you want to watch the video afterwards, they'll pop it up. Uh, welcome. Uh, did you get the... No, I'm up. Uh, I'd like everybody uh, stand and rise and... Mr. Baders, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <clears throat> To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Vice President Zach, if you would please. Our mission is to empower all learners to be college and career ready, and to develop, grow, achieve, and produce productive citizens. Thank you. Dr. Mitchum, agenda re with revisions. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I'd like to ask that the board amend the agenda to remove consent agenda item 6.3 uh, to action. Motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The ayes have it. Mr. Grzafi, Treasurer's Report. <clears throat> yes, the Treasurer's Report, Action 5.1, includes your monthly reports, financial reports, balance sheets, summary of revenue and expenditures. Interim obligations for this month are considerably higher than they are in any typical month because they include the debt service obligation uh, for the month of November. Total interim obligation payments, $32,172,542.74 for your action. So moved. Is there any discussion? Roll we'll call vote, please. Member Perro? Yes. Member Baduris? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Gilbo? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Schedule of bills for December 2017 represents six funds totaling $2,457,757.36, also for your action. Motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. Second. Motion and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Baduris? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Gilbo? Yes. Member Perrell? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. As is typical, we also have the summary of investments for November, the property taxes received, state funding update, as well as the school's trust account activity for October for your information and to answer any questions you may have. Anybody have any questions? Uh, you know, I always ask the state of Illinois, but it looks like that money's pretty uh, under control now. They only owe us $3 million. Which correct. Is correct. The 2.6 is uh, about 65 days old. That's the largest sum. All the others are small, uh, small amounts. So I would say we're running about just over two months behind. Uh, the, the state tax is uh, going to be a blended income tax this year. The 4.95 will not kick in. Uh, so that's how they're paying the bills, 4.95. So your state income tax for the 2017 tax season, which we'll be filing after in the spring, uh, will be an effective rate of about 4.35%. That's the uh, state of Illinois passed an income tax, uh, and the corporate rate will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 7.5% or something like that, just so you know, going forward. Uh, the Illinois State Department of Revenue has published that on their website, so that information is accessible. Consent agenda items. Dr. Mitchum. Yes, Mr. President. I'd like to ask the board to approve consent agenda item 61 through 6661 board meeting minutes for 11-13-17, 62 executive session meeting minutes for 11-13-17, 63 fiscal year 2016-27. Oh, I'm sorry, that's removed. Oh, sorry, that's removed. Uh, scratch that. Six. The new 63 student activity contract approval request to Oakview Elementary School with Inter. State Studio, the new 64 gifts for Oakview Elementary School and Romeoville High School, the new 65 trips for A. Vito Martinez Middle School, Bolingbrook High School, and Brook Middle School. Motion? So moved. Any sec motion and seconded. Although, oh, I'm sorry, we are spending money. Need a roll call vote, please. Member Perrell? Yes. Member Gilbo? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Berduras? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. 
Uh, Gary, now we'll go to what would be 6.6, .6, the audit, if you would. Uh, we are we presenting to you tonight our fiscal year 27 audit. Uh, there's five components contained within the audit. Uh, the district annual financial report, the federal programs report, the annual financial report, including all footnotes, the communication letter, as well as the management letter. Uh, the responsibility for both the accuracy and of the data and completeness of the presentation uh, rests with management and the district. Uh, happy to report that the audit did not find any major findings. Uh, the AFR was filed timely on October 15th with the Will County Regional Office of Education. Uh, the school district financial profile uh, is maintained at the highest level uh, of category of financial strength, which is um, recognition. Uh, and so from years 2003 to 2008, we were in financial recognition. Uh, from 2008 to 2014, we were in financial review, which was the second, uh, second from the top. Uh, in 2015, 2016, and now 2017, we have uh, crept back into the, uh, or climbed back into the financial recognition uh, category. Uh, so that's certainly a, a testament to uh, our, our operations in terms of uh, finance. So we're happy to report that. Um, estimated operating expense per pupil is 13,464. Uh, I looked all over and could not find the 2017 state average, but we were literally uh, $6 off of the state average in 2016. So I would imagine we didn't deviate too much in 2017, but we can share those when, when uh, those averages are released. Uh, same thing with the per capita tuition charge. Um, we were within $11 of the average of 20, in 2016. Uh, and so that had about a $240 increase uh, for 2017. Um, the management letter is there. There's, a, 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 like I said, a couple minor findings uh, related to deposit collater collateralization. Uh, we maintain um, balances in some public investment pools uh, that are basically obligations of the U.S. government's agencies and its agencies, and they're backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. Uh, so they're not collateralized like they would be with a typical CD, um, but again, we feel uh, uh, very confident that those pools are uh, safe vehicles for us to, uh, to invest in. Um, the other uh, finding was um, student activities. Um, they felt like there are uh, agency-type funds that are um, being used in the trust, um, basically, the funds that were being generated by the uh, by vending machines, whether they be soda machines or, or candy machines, uh, snack machines, and uh, those funds aren't being um, raised for any specific purpose, and they felt that those should be uh, agency funds and be held in the district's uh, fiduciary control. So the school wouldn't lose access to it, but they just wouldn't be part of the student trust activity. Uh, so we are in the process of having those funds uh, accounted for on our books, um, they said the State Board of Ed is cracking down on those in the last several years, and so that was the recommendation. Uh, we had that discussion with both principals at each high school, and uh, they are on board with uh, this process. So, uh, again, they've got to justify their visit. <laughs> and so uh, those, that's the, uh, the bulk of the findings. Um, at this time, we are recommending acceptance of the audit as presented. So moved. Second. Mo motion second. Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. I don't have a discussion, but if you looked through all those documents, you have to be impressed by Gary and Joanne Borg and the whole staff for all that they do. Nice job. But uh, how long have we used Evans Marshall Keys? Is that like, is this our second year with them? Third year. Third year? Third year. Uh, just as a, a matter of, I think it's good, fine, sound financial practice, uh, you should switch your auditors up every three or four or five years just because you get a different set of eyes that look at things a little differently. And uh, we used to use Warmer Rogers. Warmer Rogers. Yeah, now yeah. we're using these guys. So this is something that I think it's a good uh, thing, and we do that. So uh, We have a motion to second. Without any further discussion, a roll call vote would be in order. Member Gilbo? Yes. Member Peril? Yes. Member Baduris? Yes. Member Campbell? Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Next up, student recognition. Oh, well, yeah, we're good. Pillars of Valley View. Who's got the pillar tonight? Miss Perro. No. no? Miss Sakura.
Jane Adams with the principal pulse with How come I don't see that? Good evening, President Quigley, Vice President Zach, members of the board, members of senior leadership, Dr. Mitchum, members of the community, and members of our Mustang family. I'm Teresa Polson, the principal of Jane Adams, and it is an extreme honor to stand before you this evening to recognize, um, with the support of the Jane Adams staff, Miss Carrie Locke as a pillar of, Jane, of Valley View. The definition of pillar in the dictionary is a structure used as a support for a building, and that is exactly what Mrs. Locke is to Jane Adams students, families, staff, and the district. She has served the Mustang family for 17 years. <coughs> 17 years as a mathematic teacher, as well as dabbling a little in science. As she brings her teaching career to a close this year, we celebrate her as she has always served as an instructional leader for the district. She is an exemplary mathematics teacher who serves as the key leader, member of the BIT team, a past student council sponsor in NJHS. In addition, she was instrumental in creating the first mathematics club for the district, which now evolved into mathletes. And she's a long standing holder of that, of pointers. Fifth year we'll be going for. As a classroom instructor, Ms. Locke is a standout in her ability to reach all students academically and social emotionally. She serves as an instructional leader at Jane Adams that holds all students and staff to high academic standards. She is a data-driven, fierce teacher that makes all decisions based on what's best for her students. Students respond well to her high expectations and can often be seen leading their own learning inside her classroom. And there's many current and past Mustangs in the audience that could attest to that. We got a peace sign up here. Right? Her students use words such as nice, challenging, fun, enthusiastic, understanding, and dedicated to describe her. Mrs. Locke is a leader in which her colleagues greatly respect her work, dedication, persistence to reach every student. I asked uh, many colleagues to describe her in two words. One colleague said, what? Two words, not enough. Other colleagues described her as innovative, student-centered, an exemplary role model in teaching, foundational leader, dedicated, loyal, and energetic. Another said, I've been teaching for 18 years and she is by far one of the best I have ever seen. Lastly, one colleague said, and we all feel, we are so blessed to have worked side by side with her over the years. Thank you, Mrs. Locke, for your dedication, continued support to all of our families and students. Next, we have uh, Bolingbroke High School, represented by Principal Dr. David Paskevich, with Member Campbell presenting the pillar pen. Uh, Dr. Pascavage, proud principal of Bolingbroke High School, community, colleagues, students, Board of Education, President Quigley, Dr. Mitchum, and Ms. Casey. Today, I present to you two, not only fine officers, but two of the greatest resources a school community could ask for, Officer John Ivlo and Officer Antonio Tucker. These officers have mad street cred with the kids. So at BHS, they are known as Tuck and Ivlo. 
These two officers put the R in SRO, which is resource. They are a resource to us, and they are a resource to our students. We are fortunate to have these men protecting and supporting our youth. When it comes to safety, these two are zero nonsense. But when it comes to protection, these are the two individuals you want in your school. These two combined have about 20 years in our building, with Ivlo having 17 of those. Tuck. Tuck and Ivlo have coached our sports teams, mentored our students, coordinated the Youth Police Council, have been assigners for community service, and were part of the Heart Organization under the late Joanne Robinson. So I interviewed some students, and I asked two of them to describe Tuck and Ivlo. The first young man said, they are cool. Was, the next young man said, yeah, cool. <laughs> so tonight, I present to you the Bolingbrook High School Pillars of Valley View, Officer John Ivlo and Officer Antonio Tucker, two of the coolest men you will ever meet. And they brought their own cheering section. Did they tell you guys there was free pizza? <laughs> Good, because there's not. These fine gentlemen sitting in the uh, front row with the red zone t-shirts on. Um, if you ever want to be entertained, I suggest you go to a Bolingbrook High School athletic event, uh, in particular basketball, whether it be men's or women's, or volleyball, whether it be men's or women. They have a um, fan base that is second to none, and these guys really are a hoot. So there was this TV show a long time ago Miami Vice. <laughs> so, Crockett and Tubbs, you guys decide who's who. <laughs> you guys, thank you. Uh, it's not often that you talk about the red zone. It's not often you see a six foot four, Cameron, six four kid dressed in a tutu with angel wings when it's 25 degrees out. So I'm pretty impressed with that. So thank you. Um, moving down the agenda. Where are we at? Uh, special recognition award. Oh. For, no, right? Pillows of Valley View, special recognition award. Reading is a skill, and I mastered it when I was like in eighth grade. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Mitchum, senior leadership and community members. My name is Allison Ewald and I'm the principal at Jonas Hawk Elementary School. It is my pleasure to introduce you our school nurse at Jonas Hawk, Lisa Pickering. Thanks to Nurse Lisa's proper training and fast action, a student's life was saved on Friday, November 17th. Jason, who's sitting in the front row, and his classmates were enjoying their afternoon snack at around 2 o'clock p.m. when part of the muffin he was eating became lodged in his throat. As Jason began having difficulty breathing, the teacher grabbed the walkie-talkie radio in the classroom, relayed the message that there was a child choking. About 15 seconds after that radio call went out, Nurse Lisa arrived in the classroom and performed the Heimlich maneuver, saving Jason's life. Nurse Lisa Pickering is in her first year as the school nurse at Jonas Sock. However, we are extremely grateful to have her at our school and are glad that she's there. She's always positive, professional, always remains calm in a crisis, and puts the students' needs first. I am honored to present Ms. Lisa Pickering with the Pillar of Valley View Award and a special plaque. Congratulations and thank you, Lisa. So the plaque says, um, 
Special Recognition Award 2017 presented to Lisa Pickering, school nurse, Jonas Salk Elementary School, in honor of your dedication to the health and safety of students, your preparation, skills, and calm response in a life-threatening situation. Which one of you guys is Jason? Why don't you go up there and get a picture with your nurse? And I can just say I'm so glad she was there and is there every day. Thank you. You guys don't have to stay. You got homework to do, don't you? Look at him shake his head. No, I got nothing. I got nothing. Thank you again and congratulations. Young man, you're very lucky. All right, moving down the, let's see where we at. High school board liaison, high school student liaison reports. Uh, who goes first? I forget who went first last time. You guys pick it. Come on up. If you're ready to roll, let's roll. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the school board, community, and me members, and fellow students. I will be doing the sports uh, the sports presentation for the Bolingbrook High School winter sports. We have a basketball game on Wednesday against RHS, and we invite you to come out and support the fellow Raiders. It starts at 6.30. Bolingbrook High School competitive cheer squad took, sec took second this weekend at a very important competition at Eisenhower High School. Our wrestling team has a meet on Friday against Stag High School at 5.30. You should come out and support the Raider wrestling team. We have been on a real roll lately. Our Raider track and field team started today with preseason exercises and hope to clinch the conference championship once again for both gen genders. And we challenge our RHS liaisons to a bet if they're up to it to if Bolingbrook High School boys basketball team wins the game. You have to wear a BHS shirt to school on Monday. And if we lose, we have to wear RHS shirts to school on Monday. And a big thanks goes out to Mrs. Donna Jen for running the craft fair yet another year to raise money for our Raider wrestling team for new gear and hopefully, and hopefully a team shoe. Hello, my name is Angel Lee. For this meeting, I managed to assemble quite a few requests and reports from the students, so please bear with me. The first topic that has been brought to my attention is the concern with health classes. Health is required in order to graduate. However, this class is only easily accessible for students who are in physical education. There is a copious amount of students, including myself, that are not enrolled into physical education because we are taking ROTC or BAN. Students in ROTC or a band have to sacrifice lunch, a class of two subsequent semesters, or their summer in order to fulfill this health requirement. Students want, to want a way to work around this mishap, so I came up with a solution. There should be an after-school health class, just like there's an after-school driver's ed class. This health class can meet up after school a few times a week until 4 p.m., just like the driver's ed classes. This will enable students to take their desired classes, receive the health credit, and not go through the hassle of trying to stay in Bolingbrook for the summer. Today, however, I found out that this issue with the health classes has been resolved because we currently have a teacher applying for the position. But moving on, um, majority of the student body has viewed the changes in the social studies classes as a bit problematic. There are basically no honors classes available for social studies. You're either in regular or AP. The student body is aware and appreciative of the efforts and reasoning behind the situation, but at the same time, it can be a bit conflicting. 
some students do not to lower their GPA, but they also are not ready for the course load that comes with AP classes. The students suggested that there should be regular honors and AP classes available for not only the social studies departments, but for all. Adding on to that, students were also wondering if there can be an expansion of honors classes available. Because some hearing requests that I am hearing often are honors health and honors creative writing. Since health and fine arts are requirements, the students want to be able to take these classes without having to lower their GPA. Despite these requests, students are extremely satisfied by the copious amount of AP classes available. The classes open up more opportunities to receive college credit and explore diverse subjects for their desired careers. So thank you for adding a variety of AP classes. Outside of these requests, I will update you, I'm really sorry. Outside of these requests, I will update you on one of the programs I am enrolled in. Air Force Junior ROTC is doing quite swell. Last Thursday, our drill team had a meet at Lincoln Way East and our teams were a dominating force. We had first place in unarmed color guard, first place in unarmed expedition, first place in unarmed inspection, and first place in the overall unarmed category. We also had first place in armed expedition and first place in armed color guard. Despite these huge first place victories, overall we got second place, losing by one point. The next drill meet is going to be held at VHS on January 17th, so you all should come out and support the Air Force Junior ROTC cadets. Next month, we are about to experience a change in command, meaning that the juniors will be appointed leadership positions for next year's enrollment. The change in command ceremony will be held on January 12th, and it means the world to us. We're hoping that Dr. Pascavage and Dr. Best can attend the event. The students and the instructors agree that they are happy with the flexibility that the district has granted the program. There are no requests, only satisfaction. VHS also took on a student administration program, which enables the students to personally meet up with Dr. Pascavage and discuss changes that they want to see around the school. Things that are currently being discussed include the cell phone policy and the bathroom escorting. With this administration, Dr. Pascavage is able to immediately address situations in a way that you guys, the school board, are able to address us. So thank you. Thank you for being out, and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Find a rabbit, let us know. Huh? Never mind. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board and fellow community members. What's up, guys? <laughs> um, big things have been happening at Bolingbrook High School as of late. Auditions for our spring musical, The Little Mermaid, took place last Friday. I'd like to congratulate everyone who made the cast, and I'm hopeful to see some of the board members at the performance. Um, come March, our Magical Choir also had their Magical Dinner a few weeks back, and I had the great pleasure of directing that. I was happy to see quite a handful of board members there. Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah? All right. Um, they also have been singing around Bolingbrook at the tree lighting, nursing homes, and preschools. We also have our holiday winter concert this Thursday at 6.30 and 8.30. If you guys want to come see it, I'll be performing, and I'm sure I can sneak you guys in if you don't want to pay for a ticket. Um, aside from all of our theater happenings, our NHS students are participating in Operation Christmas. Our students have been uh, doing a fantastic job of trying to raise money for these children. And uh, we'll let you guys know exactly how much we made uh, at the next board meeting once all the numbers come in. Um, and then our language department is raising money for low-income families in the Bolingbrook community alone. Um, our, me and Armand's uh, Spanish class has raised over $100 already um, in just a couple of weeks, so that's great, along with um, the other classes that our language department has. Um, this is truly a season of giving for Bolingbrook High School as we try our best to honor Bolingbrook and honor the Raiders. Thank you. If I, uh, if I may make one point uh, concerning um, the AP courses, uh, both myself and Mrs. Kinder were invited to uh, an AP Honors Luncheon uh, that consisted of AP Honors from both Bolingbrook and Romeoville High School uh, at Fat Ricky's. And I was very excited to see the uh, cross-section of diverse kids who were exhibiting success in our AP courses. 
It was just a few short years ago that you would have not have seen such a diverse cross-section of our kids in our AP courses. And I believe the expansion of those courses and the allowance of so many other kids uh, into those courses who have proven the aptitude to be proficient in those AP courses speaks to volumes uh, for, for our kids and is doing exactly what we anticipated that it could do. As you know, AP courses have no prerequisites by their own charter. And so it is our goal to make sure that at least every student in our high schools is, is exposed to at least one AP course because they do have the aptitude to be able to be successful in that course. So I thank you students uh, for your efforts and uh, it's turning out to be exactly what we anticipated. So thank you. Next up, I have, I'm sorry, I just have one more, um, oh. one more comment, President Quigley. I just wanted to thank you for um, sharing all the good news and the feedback with us as well. And I'm happy to report that um, Dr. Pascavage did share with me that, you know, through working with you, they've come up with a solution for the health concern that you raised, like you mentioned. And so the eighth hour health class will be offered to offer that um, option. And that um, we will take your feedback about our honors programming um, into consideration. And we definitely appreciate hearing your voice and the voice from your student, um, fellow students. Thank you. I was just, I did not hear those recommendations. I know they were saying something. I'm glad that uh, you heard them so that we can take into consideration to let them know that as liaisons, their voices are definitely being heard. And thank uh, Dr. Vescavage, who've already worked on the health. And so keep it up, guys. Well, Mayor Campbell, I think uh, this encapsulates your vision for, for this endeavor. And so I thank you for pushing it. Romeoville High School, come on down. Good evening, board members. Tonight we will be presenting a semester in review slideshow that gives a glimpse into all the incredible things that our staff and students have accomplished this year. So in terms of our AP um, events that we've been doing, RHS hosted an AP night with a student panel. It was a huge success as we were able to give away 10 scholarships for the AP test. Most recently, we along with Bolingbrook High School celebrated some of our AP students with a lunch at Fat Ricky's. Also pictured is our incoming freshman student panel where we answered soon to be Spartans questions about high school. And also our AP literature program has been raising money through bake sales and candy grams to allow more students the opportunity to take our AP test. How far are you, Sam? This year our student our this year our sports teams have been on fire and working harder than before. Cheer got first place in their competition at Wilmington High just last weekend, qualified for state as well. Our boys soccer team ended the season 16-5-2, which is one of the best seasons in school history. Our boys cross country also are doing great things as well. We even had our senior Dan Ford in the top 18 in their conference. Good evening, everyone. Up here we have Mr. RHS. So Mr. RHS is our coveted title among our senior boys here at Romeoville. To win the title, the boys must compete in formal wear, makeovers, and talent. This year was our 21st annual Mr. RHS, and we had a total of 22 competitors. The auditorium was packed, and the competition was fierce. And pictured up there with the crown is our winner, Michael Castris. I'm back. So this semester, our Orange Crush was the most successful it's ever been. We had a theme for every football game, home and away, and the bleachers were packed every Friday night. With our Spartan family all getting together to cheer on our team, we definitely look forward to all of our upcoming sporting events because Orange Crush will just continue to improve. This year, we had a planned some very interesting days for our homecoming week. 
Uh, we had a big turnout. Even the teachers and staff tried to participate in any way they could. Monday was Millionaire Monday, where students dressed for success. Tuesday was Character Day, where we had students um, have a chance to let out their creative side and bring their favorite characters from TV shows, cartoons, and comic books alive. Wednesday was Way Back Wednesday, and the students dressed like their favorite decade. Thursday was Tacky Taurus Day, where students could finally bring out those old fanny packs. And finally, Friday was our color wars with seniors in white, juniors in blue, sophomores in green, and freshmen in red. This year, we started something called Seniors at Sunrise, where seniors got all together to watch the sunrise together and spend time with each other. This was definitely something that we will definitely remember when we graduate. Homecoming is always one of the most exciting events during our first semester. We started off homecoming this week on a Friday, decorating our hallways to match our theme of the dance, which was Hollywood. So all students are welcome to stay after school to decorate, so we had a big turnout. That's that top center picture. So our homecoming events are held every night of homecoming week leading up to our dance. This year we had a bonfire Monday, a volleyball game Tuesday, our carnival Wednesday, pot -a puff Thursday, and our home game on Friday, which was a whiteout. Our marching band had another incredible season, taking third place overall at our U of I competition and also winning the Best Crowd Pleaser Award at ISU this year. And for our choir, we had the opportunity to host the SBC Choir Festival this year for the first time. They also recently just finished their magical dinner, which is always a success for them. <clears throat> leadership this year went to the SPC conference at Oswego to connect with other leaders at different schools and to really talk about what we can do in our communities. That's the bottom right corner. That's all of leadership. Um, we exchanged ideas and even made new friends. Leadership also went to BHS to create an alliance and really sat down and listened to each other and talked about how we can bring our schools together. That was the top right picture. Groups like Key Club and NHS have come together to give back and pack foods for families in need. We had a really big turnout for that one. That was uh, the top left corner uh, picture. Um, Best Buddies, which is a group that focuses on making friendships and memories that will last forever, uh, kicked off their Best Buddies events and paired up um, people together just to create friendships. Uh, the robotics team hosted their first competition and it was a huge success. That's the bottom uh, left corner. Our NHS program had another successful year working with CASA in their annual holiday event. Students dressed up and sang to children on their way to go see Santa this year. They also told st the story of the Polar Express and had a lot of fun along the way. We also had Key Club help us in a rack club. It was basically a whole joint effort in getting every club to come and help out, and it was a great event. No, so you guys didn't miss it. Our actual homecoming dance this year was also a major success. Our night, our night under the spotlight brought everyone's true Hollywood spirit out. In all, we had just over a thousand, a thousand students attend this dance, which is our largest homecoming ever. Our school play this year called The Trouble with Cats was a huge hit at our school. The seats were packed every night. This comedy definitely flipped the page for the future plays that we're gonna have. And that's our semester in review. We hope you enjoyed hearing about all things RHS. We owe this success, successful semester to all of our amazing staff and students who make every day at RHS memorable. Thank you so much for your time, and we hope you all have the 
have a great rest of your evening. And then quickly to address our bowling book liaisons, I, for one, am definitely on for a bit of a competition. Uh, we are fifth ranked in the state for basketball, and they are sixth, so I have full confidence in our basketball team. I cannot speak for my fellow liaisons, but you are definitely on. Just so you know, the RHS shirts are kind of tight, so you might want a larger size. Is there going to be a side bet? You guys going to wash each other's cars in December? <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate that. Uh, board liaison reports. From my right. From my left. Uh, last week, we had another teacher appreciation uh, meeting, uh, Member Campbell and myself. Uh, we hope to start implementing some of our ideas in February or March. We meet again um, and go over some data that's going to be, um, uh, several of us are going over data during the Christmas break, actually, bringing it back to the committee in uh, January to discuss. Um, we also had a Valley View Enrichment Foundation workshop on grant writing, where we had about 20 people who came. Um, thank you to Anna Wilson, who allowed us to use her school, and Beth Stevens, who uh, helped wor do the workshop for us. Uh, just report from Springfield, as I uh, mentioned earlier, the uh, state of Illinois passed a tax increase to uh, help solve some of its major budget woes. The amount is something in the neighborhood of about $4.6 billion with the, from the 3.75 to the 4.9 percent on individual income tax. Uh, it, the blended, because it's a half a year increase, will be the 4.35. Don't take, I'm not a CPA, there's some formulas in there, but generally speaking, the average individual state income tax will go from 3.75 to 4.35 this year Next year, you'll pay the full freight of 4.95, of course, unless the General Assembly decides to do something different with that. And then the corporate tax has to raise correspondingly to that. Um, as Mr. Gazafi indicated, we're, we're getting paid in a more regular, timely basis from the state, finally. Uh, state's still not out of the water yet with all their financial issues, but they are, have come a long, long way to paying down some debt that was over 24 months old. Uh, they borrowed many, many, many billions of dollars and uh, astoundingly got a fairly decent rate from the bond houses that they borrowed from. So compared to uh, where they were to where they are, uh, it's, it's moving forward. Uh, as I stated before, the education funding formula, while not perfect, uh, is certainly a step in the right direction. Uh, it, it's, it's tough to run a school district when you don't know how much money you're going to have year to year, uh, which is one of the reasons we have heavy reliance on uh, on property taxes, uh, but it is what it is, as they say. So uh, if you have any questions about those things and you want to get into the weeds, Gary, I'm sure, can provide that information. But uh, uh, thank you all for those efforts and, uh, you know, and the people who look out for us in Springfield as well. Everybody's done pretty much uh, a yeoman's job when it comes to this. And they have solved, like I said, the education funding, something that's been debated for 25 years at least, uh, at least has some kind of calmness put onto it and some fairness, as it were. Moving down the agenda, audience participation. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to address the board this evening? If so, please state your name, where you're from. We ask that you limit your comments to four minutes or less. If you have written documentation you would like to uh, <laughs> propose, uh, kindly give it to the clerk when you're done. Can you speak into the microphone? Can I put this below? Oh, laptop, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. He'll take it. Ruin the equipment. Thanks.
Hello, yes. Uh, hello, board, Dr. Mitchum. Um, again, my name is Susan Kuttner. I've been a Valley View resident for 14 years. And um, uh, I'd like to address the board again uh, regarding some new information. Um, recently, the um, Part B uh, Special Education Illinois funding, district funding, um, I've become aware is at risk. Uh, the November 21st, 2017, Illinois State Board of Education letter stated that after two, li two deadlines to make um, four corrections following the founded complaint July 31st, 2017, with seven to 10 violations, that the district has still not, is still not in compliance in training for isolated timeout and restraint. Um, this is now an issue likely to affect um, every Valley View taxpayer, our children, parents, residents, citizens, and teachers. We have been um, complaining to the district uh, and the superintendent for about two to, th two to three years over many of these issues, including these uh, currently in violation. And um, I will just read the last paragraph from the 1121 ISBE letter. Uh, it states that the district is reminded that failure to provide all parts of the corrective action ordered by the required date may result in a warning letter and possible consideration of enforcement procedures. And such enforcement procedures may include suspension of the school recognition or an order withholding some or all of your Part B funds. Um, there's much before that and much before um, after that um, regarding the training um, um, requirements not being fulfilled or the, not, not in compliance. Um, as the districts co failed to comply at this point, and now we, um, as a district, might be losing funding, uh, part or all of the Part B funding um, from the state of Illinois. Um, as taxpayers were concerned, um, we'll pay more in taxes, perhaps. Um, our children um, will be affected. Um, teachers and staffing may be affected, uh, especially children in edu uh, special education. Um, with permission from the board, um, we would like to submit the November 21st letter regarding uh, part or all of the state funding which may be withheld. Um, can we bring that up now? Is that okay? If you wanna we have a copy for each um, member if, if you need it. So we're asking the board to take action um, in, in supporting our students um, and teachers. Um, our petition, we do have a petition that we've um, begun, uh, is on change.org, um, under school board take control of the district administration and the superintendent. Um, we also have a written petition as well um, as the change.org, and we ask that be kept confidential by the board if possible. Uh, from the district and superintendent for the protection of the students, parents, and teachers, if that's possible. Um, as concerned parents and residents, we're petitioning the Valley View School Board, uh, School District 365U School Board as follows, requesting that the school board take control of the uh, district administration and superintendent. Um, the, the actual entire um, Petition could be found on the uh, change.org. Um, I'll read it as follows. As Valley View School District 365U School Board, mem school board um, you have delegated power to the superintendent. We request that the school board fully take control over the district and superintendent and perform elected duties. We also request the board replace any and all of the following positions due to the failed compliance and founded violations and ongoing investigations where school recognition and funding from the state of Illinois are currently at, at risk. And these are the positions of the superintendent, the executive director of student services, and the director of special education. Um, as the source of the continued noncompliance is in training for isolated timeout and restraint, we would like to remind the board that the Illinois 
compilation of school discipline laws and regulations required for isolated timeout and restraint under 105 ILCS 5-33-18.20 under discipline section 1.285 H uh, 2C around pages 26 to 27 for most people. <laughs> Where, uh, where it states that the trainers must be trained within the preceding one year. Um, in recent sworn uh, testimony a few months ago, three of the district district's trainers testified that they were not aware of this regula regulation or that they had not been trained themselves in restraint in almost two years or two to three years. Again, this is not an individual issue. This is affecting the entire district. And there are staff that work district-wide and not only in one or two schools. Um, so we are looking at, you know, we feel is a significant, um, significant issue. And um, we ask that the board's response regarding the failure um, of the district or the superintendent to comply, as this concerns the continued noncompliance um, by both the district or the superintendent, we would, um, we would need a response from the board itself. We will uh, look into these allegations of compliance uh, I'm not aware at this time that we are grossly out of compliance with any of the uh, things in this letter, but I will ask our legal counsel and our special ed legal counsel and anybody that's responsible for that to look into those issues. Okay, I would just further request that um, it's, it's recently come to my attention that the district's attorney is also potentially the board's attorney, and that might create a conflict of interest. Um, so I would just request that if, if it is reviewed, I'm not sure who, who each of the attorneys are. I know there's an attorney sitting here, so obviously that would be, you know, adequate. But um, we would just further request that that be, um, you know, um, looked at separately because um, um, we are just bringing the facts that we have, the letters and the, and the evidence that we do have that, that is founded and confirmed. And that's what we're looking um, to have looked into. Well, we will, we will certainly have our attorneys look into I, I, it. If I may respond to that. Sure. Uh, the, the district's attorney is seated at the diocese. Okay. Uh, the attorney representing the district specific to your case is our special education attorney. And they are two different law firms. So the district's attorney is John and the special education attorney representing the district uh, does not represent the board per se. They are... They are here to defend the district in the case of special education. Yes, that certainly clarifies because I was not aware of, you know, there are multiple attorneys, so I just wanted to respectfully ask that that be. And if I also may comment, I'm sorry, I didn't mean sorry. to interrupt you. Are you finished? Just, you I just said independently reviewed, okay. that's all. Uh, I also want to assure the board that the district uh, will not lose uh, funding. I will go on record to say that. And if you can provide us with uh, a copy of your narrative, uh, we would be more than willing to provide a response to each of, each of your allegations uh, and, and distribute that to the board at the next board meeting. And President Quigley, if I may point out one detail in the documentation that was shared, there is a statement um, regarding this specific complaint that was lodged that the documentation about the training needs to be provided by February 16th, 2018. As that's still two months out from today, that um, appropriate documentation will be provided. Um, in response to this request um, and that we do, um, we are in compliance with training of our staff for isolated timeout and um, physical restraint and we have protocols in place for that and so the documentation will, will um, in fact be supplied by that deadline of February 16th, 2018. Thank you. Yes. Thank and, you for your comments. And just, Ma and just to, we, we try to keep these to. I'm just trying to ask how to, um, how to get you the petition, like what, what, I don't know what the protocol is. I don't, I can't hear you. How, how to get the petition to you? You can hand it to Shelly right there. Oh, okay. Some of it we don't have here with us, and some of it's online. So, um, I, is, is an email okay? Are you referencing the change.org petition? Yeah, there's a combination of written and um, uh, on, on, online. So the change.org petition, uh, the district has access to uh, that petition, uh, I believe, started by you and um, it's 16 signatures, uh, so the, the board can access that via online. Uh, your written petition, if, again, as Mr. Quigley stated, if you could provide that to Shelly Casey, she will ensure that the board gets copies of that. Okay, and, and may I also email um, 
um, some additional, the additional um, sure. document, or the additional um, parts I, of the petition. I, I, will, I will say that I, I know that there's a great deal of professionals uh, that we hire, uh, both internally and externally, who spend a great deal of time and effort and energy on special ed cases and on uh, making sure that all of our staff are compliant with uh, whatever regulations they have, be it regular classroom certi certification through the regional superintendent of the schools, whatever the certifications are. Uh, so I would find it uh, surprising if we were grossly out of compliance. We may have one or two instructors that might be out of compliance, uh, but I think that's tracked fairly, fairly regularly. I'm just. It is tracked and monitored yeah. very closely, yes, yeah. sir. Thank you. Okay, oh. and there, this is the third deadline, just to clarify that in this particular situation. There were two deadlines given and the February date that I believe it's Ms. Kinder had mentioned is the, is the third um, deadline that I'm aware of. The February deadline is the third deadline. Right. The and third and final. As mm -hmm. with any case, there is a process of um, filing a complaint, becoming aware of the complaint, and then being able to respond to said complaint. And as such, the State Board of Education then issues deadlines pursuant to the um, complaint filed and the response issued. So we will be um, in compliance with the date issued, and that is February 16, 2018. Great. Thank you. I just want to reiterate that uh, the district is not, I repeat, not in danger of losing state funding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Great you. Comments. Anyone else wish to address the board? Seeing none, moving down the agenda. Student due process cases. Dr. Mitchum. Yes, I'm gonna separate these cases. Uh, I'd ask that the board approve student due process case A as presented. Motion. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Campbell. Yes. Member Paduras. Yes. Member Peril. Yes. Member Gilbo? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Uh, I'd also like to ask the board to approve student due, due process case B, also as presented. Motion? So moved. Second. Motion and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. Roll call vote, please. Member Gilbo? Yes. Member Peril? Yes. Member Baduras? No. Member Campbell? No. Secretary Sikora? No. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, next down the agenda. Where are we at? Ms. Hawks? Um, My I, have, I believe I have action item 11.1. .1. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Action Report 11.1 .1 tonight is regarding Special Education Extended School Year Program for School Year 17-18. This program is provided for a limited portion of the special education population. To be il eligible, students must exhibit considerable regression of learned skills and an inability to recoup the loss in a reasonable um, period of time as determined by their IEP or their individualized education plan. So we're seeking your approval for this program that we run um, during the summer. The details are outlined in the report and were shared with you at the last board meeting. Um, we're happy to answer any questions. We run this program on an annual basis for um, that designated population of students. Motion? So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Uh, Hearing I have, none. I, oh. have a, I have a question. Um, for this program, I know summer school normally, they alternate between schools. Um, if it does continue on, Will that be also um, the protocol for the special ed summer school? Right, and so um, at the high school level, that is definitely possible. Um, at middle school and elementary, we look where those programs can best be serviced. Um, because of the intense needs of many of our students in this programming, we need the appropriate environment and um, equipment to service the students as well. So we traditionally hold um, early childhood at the Early Childhood um, Center, elementary um, at RC Hill, and then um, middle school and high school, we've combined um, to run at the high schools where those services are available. We have rotated in years past. Um, another consideration is availability of space. So if we have, say, a construction project or something like that nature going on and we're not able to hold it um, where we couldn't safely accommodate the students or the space wasn't available, then we make that as a determining factor. But to answer your question, um, we, we would be able to rotate um, where applicable at that appropriate level. 
Thank you. Uh, moving down the agenda. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, we still have a vote take. Uh, we have a motion and a second with no further comments or questions. Roll call vote. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Gilbo? Yes. Member Peril? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Mr. Grzapi, if you would, resolution number 1602. 1602 is a recommendation to approve the levy um, for 2017 uh, in your packet. Uh, all of the exhibits are identical to what you received in February. Uh, I did reach out to the uh, county assessor's office to see if there were any updates on property valuations, uh, both existing and new, and uh, there was nothing that they could provide me. Uh, so uh, everything that was estimated is included. Uh, there are just two new exhibits at the very tail end of the packet, uh, property data uh, exhibit, really no change. 80% of our property lies within DuPage Township, 20% within Lockport Township. Um, 58% residential, 26% industrial, 14% commercial, and a very, very small percentage uh, between farm and railroad. Um, the, the last illustration in the packet just kind of gives you a sense of uh, how much of our uh, property value or property uh, levy represents to our overall revenue stream, uh, and it's the uh, bottom or far right hand bottom column 65% uh, of our revenue uh, is represented by the property tax levy. Um, as I indicated back in November, we've got uh, six primary takeaways of the levy. Uh, our operating levy is 1.92% uh, increase over last year's request, or 4.93% over last year's actual extension. Uh, the debt service extension will increase by 5.3%, which is less than the 8.8 it was last year. Uh, total levy request is 177350000 uh, We will not receive that much new revenue, but we are requesting more due to our equalized assessed valuation, or EAV, and new property being unknown at this time. Uh, our best guess as to what we will actually receive due to being limited to a consumer price index, or CPI increase, of 2.1 is $145,429,000 in new operating revenue which equates to a 2.68% increase in the operating revenue stream. Uh, overall expected levy increase, including new property and debt service, is a 4.76% increase. So at this time, we are recommending resolution 16.02 to be presented, uh, approved as presented. Motion? S second. Motion and second. Is there any discussion? Anybody have any questions of Mr. Gazzafi? Uh, again, it looks like our projected rate is a little bit less than it was last year. Correct. Uh, a smidgen, but still good news for the taxpayers. Hopefully, in the state of Illinois, if they start funding education properly, it'll continue to go down. Uh, motion second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Gilbo? Yes. Member Peril? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley. Yes. Mr. Grzapi, snow removal bid. Yeah, we've got a kind of an unusual, situ unusual situation. At the October board meeting, uh, the board had approved uh, Burnick Commercial Services as our low responsible bidder for a snow, and salt, uh, snow removal and salting at Bolingbrook High School, as has been the case since we opened Bolingbrook High School. Uh, since that time, they failed to return a signed contract despite follow-up follow requests being made. Um, they also failed to respond to attempts to um, service the school as needed on two separate occasions. Uh, on November 20th, we sent them a letter indicating we were rescinding their proposal based on their failure to respond to our communication efforts, uh, as well as showing up. Uh, so at this time, we are uh, recommending we go with the second lowest bidder, Premier Snow and Ice. Uh, the difference in value of contracts is about is $1,497 based on uh, a nine-year average, uh, as indicated in the exhibit. Um, we have reached out to their references. They do check out. And so um, just to give you a sense, they've got um, eight to ten properties off of Remington, Bo Remington Boulevard in Bolingbrook. Uh, and so the uh, uh, um, references are that they're very responsive. They have a, a large amount of equipment and a small radius of, of properties uh, near and dear to, uh, to Bolingbrook High. Uh, and so... Um, we've been very impressed by the scope and scale of their operation, and we feel that they are uh, our best um, our best solution at this time. Uh, so it, the recommendation is uh, based on the failure to respond to our communication efforts, failing to send equipment to facility, and failing to address the two event calls, 
approve a motion to rescind and withdraw the prior award of the proposal with Burring Commercial Services for snow removal and salting at Bolingbrook High, rescind the finding that Burrick is the lowest responsible bidder, and instead disqualifying Burrick, and, and find that Premier Snow and Ice is the lowest responsible bidder and approve a one-year contract with two one-year extension options with Premier Snow and Ice to provide snow removal and salting at BHS. Motion. So moved. Motion and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, how appropriate since today it's starting to snow. Uh, we have no further comment. Roll call vote would be in order, please. Member Gilbo? Yes. Member Peril? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Moving down the agenda, where are we at? Let's see. Ms. Hawks? Thank you, President Quigley. Action Report 13.1 this evening is the Consolidated Action Report for Certified and Classified Personnel. We're seeking your approval on 25 items for certified personnel, 44 for classified personnel, one for classified administrative personnel, and four for certified administrative personnel. Okay. Motion and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. Roll call vote, please. Member Peril? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Gilbo? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. Uh, that being said, we just hired a new director of our security, Mr. Carter Larry, if you would come up. Uh, as you know, uh, our education community and a lot of us lost a close friend and Mr. Brown, who uh, was scheduled to retire this year uh, with, with his untimely uh, demise. We uh, accelerated the process for new hiring. Mr. Larry comes to us from a background of 20 plus years in law enforcement, uh, was one of our school safety officers and also coached uh, four state championships. Six. Six state championships. Uh, so he's been in our buildings a good, good long time, has much uh, history in this community, and uh, I just wanted him to uh, come say a few words tonight. As you all know, he's got some big shoes to fill, but I think he's up to the task. I know, Leo, I probably had size 14s. You're probably in the size 12, but I think you can do it. 13. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, let me thank the members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Mitchell, and senior leadership. I can't even begin to, to tell you how honored and humbled I am to stand here before you and accept this position. Um, as you said, I have big shoes to fill, but my goal is to simply bring the same level of integrity that Mr. Brown did, his level of organizational commitment, and his humility in order to get things done within the district. I look forward to the opportunities that exist before me. I look forward to the challenges, and I look forward to meeting all the staff within the district. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Ms. Hawks. Uh, before I move on to Action Report 13.2, in addition to the board approving Mr. Carter Larry as the Director of Safety and Security, uh, the board also approved the uh, recommendation to appoint Mr. Justin Ifema as the Permanent Assistant Principal at Independence. So we want to congratulate you this evening. <laughs> Action Report 13.2 this evening. Uh, resolution number 1603, we request the board to approve the settlement agreement and general release uh, subject to attorney review. So Motion and any second? Motion and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Baduras? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Gilbo? Abstain. Member Peril? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes. And my final action report this evening, 13.3, resolution number 1604, asking the board to authorize the dismissal of educational support personnel employee for reasons other than reduction in force. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Member Peril? Yes. Member <coughs> Gilbo? Yes. Member Campbell? Yes. Member Baduras? Yes. Secretary Sikora? Yes. Vice President Zach? Yes. President Quigley? Yes.
Next, superintendent's information reports. First one uh, I will cover, I've got first three actually, uh, investment, uh, 2017 investment information report uh, as prepared by Joanne Borg, our director of accounting and our treasurer. Um, you'll see on the exhibit, uh, we've got all of our investment types listed there along with the book and market value, the yield, benchmark yield, and the benchmark it was, um, it was uh, taken against along with the percentage of the portfolio. Uh, I won't read all those to you. Uh, investments in cash balances as, as of September uh, were 115 million 666,000 compared to 146,897 thousand dollars in the prior year. Um, that was caused primarily by the fact that we've only received 84 percent of our real estate levy compared to 97 percent in the prior year uh, due to the Will County Treasurer's Office revising their real estate distribution calendar into 2016 and eliminating a prior agreement uh, that provided for accelerated distributions. Um, more importantly, the district ended the month of May with a cash balance of $35 million, which is the lowest point of the year before receiving the June real estate distributions. Uh, this figure is important to, uh, to me primarily to make sure that we have enough money to make, uh, meet our obligations uh, in the month of May, primarily payroll and paying our vendors. Uh, and so if that, if that balance were to re reach a, a zero point, uh, that means we're going to be in a situation where we would have to consider issuing what's known as TAWs or tax anticipation warrants. Uh, and that's something that uh, we really receive no value of because we're paying interest on those on those types of instruments uh, just to meet our obligations. In uh, this year, the Treasurer's Office distributed an amount in early June recognizing the difficulties that taxing bodies were facing due to the state's ongoing cash flow and budget crisis. So we, we dodged a bullet, if you will, uh, this year, and uh, we hope that uh, next year they would be uh, um, also in, in, uh, in recognition that uh, T cash flow is important to, uh, to school districts in the way they're funded. Um, cash flow li liquidity matching uh, maturity dates with expected expenditures, diversification, permissible investments are all the factors that are considered when investing in district funds. Uh, and so you can see that uh, on that front page there, there's uh, quite a bit of a diversity. Um, but again, safety is prim primarily uh, primary goal, uh, liquidity second, and rate would be the, uh, the final consideration. Um, I don't really have anything else to illustrate there. You can see at the back there's a historical information on investments along with uh, interest earned and all funds for the year. Um, happy to report that we've got uh, uh, 17 tenths of a percent uh, uh, interest, earning, uh, interest earnings in 2017, which is greater than it has been since uh, over the last five years. We're moving in the right direction. Uh, but it does not match what uh, what the prior years had held when we were in generating anywhere from four to five to seven percent interest on our investments. So, um, a very small percentage of our uh, of our um, revenue comes from interest income. Uh, so, if you have any questions, I can answer those. Anyone any questions? It it is what it is with the interest rates. Unfortunately, we are very limited by what investment pools we can get in, and when they're paying one percent and you earn one percent, you get what you get. Uh, second information report uh, is the Bolingbrook High School Auditorium Sound System. Um, we've got some issues there related to the current system. It is for approaching 14 years old. Uh, we are scheduled to, uh, the FCC has regulations that will uh, expand the spectrum for wireless uh, telephones and things, and that will interf could interfere with our microphone usage beginning in, in as early as September of 2018. Uh, the current soundboard is outdated, doesn't have any associated tools to correctly teach students. Uh, it's an outdated and flexible analog structure. Um, the new system would replace them, uh, we would replace the main speakers with a full range stereo speaker system that correctly covers every seat in the audience. New updated digital soundboard, digital infrastructure that didn't exist when the building was built, which would allow for future expansion and connection to a MIDI lab and other media arts. Also the creation of a lectern mode, which would allow one or two microphones plus a computer to be easily controlled from the stage without having to turn the entire system on. Uh, so that will go out to bid, and uh, we will bring that back to you, I think, at our next meeting. Questions on that? I do, I do have a question. I had um, asked you earlier today about this, and then Mr. Rufus, Rufus uh, answered a question that will take me years to understand what he was talking about. Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry, Carl. <laughs> But my uh, question that did not get answered was, are there any other schools that have this antiquated system that also needs to be replaced and are we doing that for them also? 
Yeah, the way, the way I under, I asked Carl, because he is our resident uh, AV expert, and uh, here's what he explained to me, that not every mic that he comes across would be illegal, if you will, according to the FCC spectrum um, uh, expansion. Uh, just the, mic, the mics operating from 16, 6, 17 megahertz and up. For example, two microphones in the Woodview gym, one has a grouping that is above the 16, 17 threshold, and the other one is below. So I think in answer to the question, we have several that wouldn't need to be replaced over time. Uh, as soon as, next, as uh, September of 2018. Uh, I don't know if we have the full inventory as of yet, but uh, that's something we're gonna continue to monitor and make sure that we're not in violation of any FCC regulations. Absolutely, yeah. Any other questions? Next item. Uh, last item for me, uh, Bolingbrook High School Athletic Storage Building. Uh, they've identified a need for additional outdoor athletic storage space to address functional safety issues. Um, we use primarily to house outdoor track and football equipment and baseball and softball supplies. The storage building would be approximately 1,200 square feet and located southwest of the stadium building near the ball fields. Uh, specifically, it would house the how jump, long jump, and pole vault pads, hurdles, blocks, shots, shot and discus, football dummies, and baseball and softball pallets of field dry. Our intent is to publicly bid the project this month and bring an action report with bid results and a recommendation at the January 22nd board meeting. Any questions? I do. I have a couple concerns, only because <coughs> it's kind of odd, but the um, investment information and the financial information was given, and I'm hearing dodging bullets, and we don't know about next year, and some terms like that, and then we want to spend a lot more money. So I um, have concerns with maybe we maybe need to see about what's going on for next year before we try to do some of this stuff. Um, I, I, one of my concerns on this particular project is I don't like to have to rebuild something twice if, uh, if the size isn't what it should be. Uh, Gary, can we make sure we look into that we are getting the square footage? I mean, there's no sense in if this thing is 1,200 square feet and it needs to be, because it was pared down from 1,500, something along those lines. I think it actually started at close to 2,000 and we we're just trying to look at the footprint um, budget uh, understood. I just, but yeah. if it's not going to be adequate and it's going to yeah. be full to the rim, the day that we open it, it's kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. So for a few, you know, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, maybe it might be worth taking a look at. Have talked to the architects, and uh, maybe they can look at maybe a couple alternatives or what have you. I, I know the finance committee has probably taken a look at this, and uh, you know maybe maybe we should have a buildings uh, committee meeting as well, but just to make sure that you know that we're not. It's a good suggestion. Doing and a ribbon cutting and then the saying, well, this is great. We should have yeah. made it, you know, right. another 600 square feet. So, thank you. And I have uh, one more concern, too, um, now that you kind of say something like that. Um, I know that probably most of the schools are hurting for storage. And um, the question of equality always comes up, not just with high schools, but with middle schools and grade schools. and. And um, we need to think about that too, that if you know one school is gonna be getting more storage, then maybe the other schools are gonna want that too. And you know, is it affordable? Uh, if I may address that. Uh, each year, I'm not sure if uh, there's a clear understanding as to our process, but each year we submit uh, to the principals that they provide us with a itemized list of their needs and that they prioritize those uh, one through whatever. And uh, we'll use that information to guide us as it applies to whether they need storage space or they need a sound system or they need uh, anything. So it's not as if these decisions are being made in a vacuum. Uh, we do seek uh, input from all of our building administration specific to what their needs are. And then we try to prioritize them uh, based on the information they provide us. Thank you. Um, let's see, next on the agenda, Panorama Survey Platform. That sounds like Ms. Kinder. Yes, that is me. I'd like to invite um, our Director of Support Services, Lisa Allen, up to the podium, and she's accompanied by our Executive Director of Student Services, Erica Ekstrom. And with this inf um, information report, um, we're, it's directly linked to goal two of our strategic plan, which relates to um, ensuring we have a safe, secure, and optimal learning environment for all of our learners. The two strategies associated with that um, goal of our strategic plan deal directly with social-emotional learning and um, supportive learning environment. 
And so what they're gonna share with you this evening pertains um, directly to um, the adoption of a platform to um, gather information related to social emotional learning, which we refer to as SEL, and culture and climate for um, and also family and community engagement. So Lisa Allen, Director of Support Services. Student supports, excuse me, Lisa Allen, Director of Student Supports. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, Board of Education, Dr. Mitchum, senior leadership, and members of the community. Tonight I represent the Valley View strategic planning teams for strategies three and four, both relating to goal two, providing students with safe, secure, and optimal learning environments. We have several members of our strategy teams here tonight, and I would like to recognize them at this time by asking that they stand. Come on, guys. Yeah. Let's hear it. Strategy three and four. Erica, you should be standing too. It's our fearless leader. Thank you. Both teams are comprised of teachers, clinicians, support staff, union leaders, building administrators, and district administrators. In addition, both teams collaborated with leaders in the curriculum department to ensure alignment with other district strategic plan initiatives. Tonight, I introduce you to the Panorama Education Survey Tool, surveying social emotional learning skills, school climate, family and community engagement, and staff engagement. Currently, our social emotional data tool measures a more limited scope of SEL domains and requires several weeks for score reporting. Panorama is a significantly more comprehensive tool with a broader range of target areas, ranging from student competencies, competencies such as social awareness, self-regulation and self-efficacy, to school safety, engagement, and rigorous expectations. The Panorama Ed Survey Tool will provide valuable assessment data on key strategic initiatives directly related to our strategic plan, offering data for buildings to use to guide programming and monitor critical indicators of student wellness and school success. Panorama is a reputable company whose surveys serve over 400 school districts and over 5 million students annually. Our team members reached out to dis uh, members of both District 68 and the Long Beach School District to vet Panorama's project products and services. Panorama surveys are research-backed. They're supported by a responsive team of project experts and they come with a wealth of supportive resources. There are four survey types available through Panorama, including the social emotional learning survey, which can be completed by both students and by teachers about their students, and then climate surveys for students, families, and staff. Survey administration begins with question selection, which is customizable to meet our district needs. Surveys are administered electronically. They're available in 13 different languages, and they cut response time in half from 40 to 20 minutes. Results are delivered directly to all school personnel in one to two weeks. Panorama allows for user-friendly reports at every level. Strategy team members have created a systematic rollout plan to provide data at the classroom level and the building level. At this time, there's no specific requirement for teacher use of this data until professional development is made available to support them. Social emotional learning results are delivered through an interactive platform that allows teachers to view whole class profiles as well as individual student profiles and growth over time. The graphic on the left right now is a, an example of a whole class profile while the graphic on the right is for one student showing her growth in certain SEL skill areas over time. Results in front of you now show that um, the family response reports on the right hand side you can see overall data reported by school while on the left you see an infographic that shows word clusters that represent commonly used words in um, open-ended responses by parents and family members. You simply click on or select a word in the infographic and it will bring up responses that contain that word so that you can dive deeper into family and student responses. Finally, Panorama includes a resource platform called the Playbook, 
which houses hundreds of fully vetted strategies to address topics identified as areas for growth, such as student engagement, teacher-student relationships, growth mindset, and more. Pending your approval, our plan is to administer social-emotional surveys to students at a pilot school this spring with full implementation in grades 3 through 12 beginning next fall. And with that, I open it up to questions, and I will be asking the team members to go ahead and assist with responses, and um, Erica Ekstrom as well. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. I read in the packet, in the presentation, that it was supposed to, um, you're supposed to have a contract authorization at our November board meeting, and here we are in December, and so what is that doing to your timeline? So we, d we did push the initial information report back because we had some other items to bring earlier in November. So it pushes back uh, just slightly our ability to sit down with the team of experts from Panorama and begin to uh, develop the survey for the pilot school. But the pilot implementation, the survey administration was scheduled to be in April and we should be just fine for making that timeline. I have a question about, um, Lisa, about the one page where you showed the individual student off on the side and they showed the emotional regulation, grit, growth mindset. Does the survey actually then give suggestions just like it does on this page where it shows like the, how the student scored and then try this in your class? Absolutely. That is given. It, it shows that report as given and then it also has in the playbook, which I'll flip back to that one. The playbook, if you look across the top, you, you can actually just type in which area you're looking for um, activities for or learning resources for, and it will bring up a plethora of um, lesson plans and resources that have been vetted by the Panorama company. In fact, one of the exciting things about this is that as we develop our own strategies and resources, we can have them vetted by Panorama and included in this playbook resource. So our very own Valley View strategies would be made public through this resource. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's called recognition, fame and fortune. Um, I have a question. How is the data collected or how is the information entered from each of the different subjects? You have the students, you have the teachers, you have the parents. Yeah, it's through an online sur survey platform, which they host, and uh, they take the, the contract that you would be approving would uh, cover their administration as well as their data reporting. So we, are, we do not need to interact with the data. We have an opportunity to inject what we may want for our customized, correct? Yes, they have over 20, they have 22 areas that we selected seven to focus on which include self, uh, social awareness and rigorous expectations and self-efficacy. And then uh, each of those areas that we selected has a hefty bank of questions and then we select the questions that we think would measure the, the items that reflect our district strategic plan as well as our building needs and student needs. Thank you. So how is that information shared or utilized by the individual teachers? Is it utilized by the district? Is it utilized by the parents or all of the above? All of the above. And if we go with the family engagement survey, it would also be, you know, those results would be made public to our families and our community. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. And you'll be bringing this back in January. That's correct. correct. Okay. Uh, if you have any further questions, you know who to talk to offline. Uh, moving down the agenda, I believe we're at, is there anybody in the audience has any questions <coughs> on actions we have taken? Am I right? Or am I missing something? Oh, I'm sorry, legal services report. He was doing the very kind thing of clearing his throat up here. No report. Thank you. Uh, AFT report. Valley View Council report. Valley View Personnel report. And the old business. Old business has no report. New business, no report. Questions of the public on actions we have taken this evening. Questions from the public. Announcements by the board. Uh, Mr. 
Miranda stuck a piece of paper in front of me that says, and the young man uh, that presented earlier says, Romeoville High School, hashtag number five, or number five, in the U.S.? Is that correct? Right? Versus. Oh, versus. Versus. I was gonna say, we're number five in the United States. Well, we'd have a lot of... Uh, versus BHS, number seven, 6.30 p.m. Wednesday at the RHS gym. I might suggest to you that the game will probably be sold out. So if you want to go, you might want to get there early. Correct, Mr. Kinder? He's nodding his head in the affirmative. 300 tickets available at the door. Uh, there's going to be people coming from all around to see this game. So it should be uh, interesting. Both teams are undefeated. Uh, I understand that most of the gentlemen are on those the two high school basketball varsity teams are also good scholars, uh, athletes as well, but uh, they also do very well in the classroom. So looking forward to seeing that game Wednesday night. If you're uh, out and about, stop by and support the local athletic teams. Um, that's all I have for that. Any other reports? Yeah, I have one. Um, I want to thank the RHS National Honor Society for conducting a food and paper products drive um, before Thanksgiving for the Romeville Community Pantry. That was great. They did a great job, and uh, it came in a nice time. And also, tell everybody out there, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you. Uh, uh, it's your button. Oh, hit it again. You were on, now you're on. There you go. I said talk too much, huh? All right, just wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and just for our staff that they would just rest during this time so they'll be all set to go on all these things we're planning on doing for the new year. Um, I would also ask that uh, we have very many in the community organizations uh, that help those who might be a little less fortunate than others this time of the year. If you're so inclined, make a contribution of food or a cash donation or a uh, gift card donation to any number of organizations that are in our communities. We have food pantries. Uh, churches that provide things. We have Operation Christmas. We have, there's numerous in the community. You don't have to look far and you don't have to look hard. But uh, there are people that live uh, right next door to you and I who may, uh, somebody may be unemployed, whatever it is. Uh, donations of coats. We have coat the kids. We have toy drives, all kinds of things. Uh, but it doesn't go unnoticed and it certainly uh, is appreciated by those who uh, receive it. Just as an FYI, a third of the population in Will County receives, I mean, it's a little over a third of the population, receives benefits from United Way services in Will County alone. So there's a lot of people. So, you know, one third of the people, so two out of one out of three are getting some services from one of those uh, provider agencies. So uh, if you're looking for something to spend a little extra money on and feel good about it, this would be a good place and a good time to do it. Uh, any information from the board? Administration. Sorry, sorry, administration. Uh, yes, I would like to make uh, one brief announcement. Uh, in the seven years that I've been the, administ uh, the superintendent of this district, uh, we have uh, spent a lot of time and effort assembling what I would perceive one of the most high, highly qualified professional staff in the country. Um, and this board also knows that uh, throughout that process, when any credible issues of concerns uh, have been brought to our attention, uh, they have been addressed by this administration up to and including dismissal. Uh, with this most recent concern, albeit as a superintendent, I have no issue with uh, anyone uh, uh, conducting a survey or uh, bringing to the board's attention issues of concern. But I do take umbrage, vehement umbrage, with any attack on our staff, uh, whether they be administration or teachers. And so I want to publicly uh, uh, indicate that in the case of uh, Mary Worcester and Erica Ekstrom, they have my unequivocal support uh, and that I uh, back them explicitly. And I do this with no concern for consequence to the superintendent. And then as long as I am the superintendent, I will continue to protect the interest of our students first, our teachers and administrators and support staff second, uh, but that I will not allow unsubstantiated attacks against uh, members of our family 
uh, without uh, uh, an appropriate response. So again, uh, any consequence uh, as a result uh, directed to the superintendent, uh, I have and always will be willing to uh, put any position I'm in at risk for the sake of the students, the staff, uh, and the administration. Uh, but I want to go on record to all of you that uh, you have my unequivocal support, uh, and, and, and specifically for Erica Ekstrom and Mary Werther, uh, I will defend and protect your integrity uh, until uh, such time that uh, I'm no longer in this chair. Thank you, Dr. Mitchum. Any other announcements by the administration? Any announcements by the public? Seeing none, hearing none, a motion to adjourn would be in order. I move. Second. Motion and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. We stand adjourned. Have a safe evening and a wonderful holiday season. <laughs>